All right, guys. If a gun was a tuxedo, it might have to be this color case hardened Henry. I mean, look how pretty that thing is. Big loop on it, 357 Magnum. This is a side loading gate model and probably one of the slickest Henry's I've ever got my hands on. So let's have some fun. Really nice slick action on this thing. We're launching some 158 grain uh, spear gold dot. Um, all right. All right, Mr. Watermelon, meet my 357. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Fun stuff. Always a uh, great day when you can destroy some watermelons and sodas. Good way to start the video out here. And uh, as I said there in the intro, really nice color case hardened model here from Henry. Uh, straight comb walnut stock, really pretty checkering, octagonal barrel. Uh, this one holds eight plus one, making nine total. Uh, you can shoot 38s out of this as well, which we will do here in a moment. Um, I don't have a ton of ammunition here with me, but we are gonna be shooting some Winchester 130 grain uh, 38 special ball. And I've also got a few of these uh, <laughs> 38 special plus P 100 grain power balls left. We might, uh, we may put something else of, uh, maybe another soda up there and shoot that here in a minute. And then that was our 158 grain 357 Magnum gold dot, which is certainly uh, uh, a bullet that can certainly get the job done. And Chad and I are gonna be doing a video in the future, and we're gonna talk about velocity differences between a revolver barrel and then something like this 16 inch barrel here, okay? Um, and showing that, you know, once you start adding a longer barrel, you know, in a rifle, especially with a pistol cartridge like 44 mag or 357 Magnum or 327 Federal, any of those type of revolver cartridges, you really get into some crazy gains in power by getting that longer barrel uh, working for you. Uh, this one is a side loading gate. Uh, Henry essentially sort of caved to the pressure. A lot of folks were asking them to do a side loader, and for a long time they said they would never do it and they finally uh, decided that they would uh, go ahead and do a side loading gate and uh, that works beautifully and you can also load uh, the rifle from the traditional uh, tube up on top as well so you can load it both ways we'll go ahead and load it from the tube and we'll drop some 38 specials in here and the color case hardening process is a really really interesting finish option and what it winds up doing is imparting a uh, a really nice hardness on the surface of the metal and because of the carbon that they're introducing into the metal it's uh, heated up to a very specific temperature and then various forms of carbon are added uh, into kind of like a meal um, I guess you'd call it like a bone paste they'll use leather and other types of uh, various carbon uh, like materials and they'll superheat the receiver and they'll put it into this material and it forms this really hard layer on the surface of the metal and I'm counting, that was five, this is number five. <laughs> okay, six, seven, eight. These are a little shorter, so we got eight in there. All right, go ahead and put the tube back in. So you can load it that way if you want. This model does utilize buckhorn sights like many of the Henrys. I have seen a few people dropping the Skinners on these, and of course those are beautiful, wonderful sights, uh, a nice peep sight, but these are buckhorns, okay? Let's have some fun. And even with those full bore 357 Magnum loads, this rifle did not kick a lot at all. Uh, for sight options, the receiver is also drilled and tapped if you want to run, uh, you know, your tally scope bases and things like that and put an optic on it. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of torn. Like, I kind of feel like this is a light handy little rifle you know, without having a whole bunch of extra stuff on it. With irons, it's just super uh, low profile and handy. You know, a great little 100 yard deer gun or something like that. But with a one to four, like a little Leupold or something, a VX3i, uh, you know, with maybe the custom dial target system or turret system on it, this would be a fun little, you know, 200 yard gun. Um, the 357 Magnum, even in the full board loading, does not kick at all out of this. This is a great option for somebody that's looking for a considerable amount of power, but in a rifle that doesn't have a lot of recoil. 
So you get all the benefits of having the longer barrel on something like a revolver, for instance, but without the, I guess, the negative context of, you know, maybe people can't shoot a revolver very well, maybe they can't hold it still, or uh, if you're an older shooter and maybe your eyes aren't what they used to be, or maybe you have bad arthritis, this is a great way to still get some steam out of a 357 Magnum and you can add yourself an optic and now you've got a way to still take deer, you know, with a 357, um, but without having to deal with, you know, maybe failing eyesight or arthritis or things like that. Or if it's a smaller frame shooter, a uh, young lady or, uh, you know, young person, a child or whatever wants to get into, you know, deer hunting, uh, this would be a great first uh, deer rifle for somebody. Um, you know, very manageable recoil. All right, so speaking of no recoil, <laughs> all right, we're gonna shoot some 38 specials. These are 130 grain. I'm just gonna group a few on this plate. Uh, very haphazardly here, dare I say, uh, <laughs> uh, just kind of impromptu here, but let's just, I'm gonna aim at the bolt. Let's just see where they group. Wow. One thing I can say, I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but I don't know if it's because of the color case hardening making the receiver, the surface of the receiver really hard, right? But the action on this gun has to be the smoothest Henry I think I've ever felt. I mean, it is mega, mega smooth. And I really love the big loop on this one. That's a nice touch. Um, so if you're out in the field or you're checking the property line or whatever you're doing out on your property, and let's say you're wearing some heavy gloves or something, uh, you do have plenty of room uh, for a gloved hand <laughs> to slip in there. Now, I know you've heard of the magazine fairy, but apparently we're getting a visit from the soda fairy. Chad went over there and replenished some sodas, and I think that's Chad's way of saying that he wants to see me shoot these uh, power balls. Now, uh, <laughs> I've got a couple of 38 special revolvers, um, you know, little short uh, 640s, and I think Brandy has a Ladysmith and 38 special. And this is what we keep them loaded with at the house. Um, I had a few of these. I thought maybe it'd be fun to uh, shoot a few and just see, but this Powerball is a ridiculously great round and uh, it, it's got a lot going for it. And if you, <laughs> if you look at the price that I paid for this ammo, it is certainly not the price that it is selling for now. All right, let's just establish that right now, okay? But a... <laughs> A Powerball round, just to put this into perspective, okay? 38 special, this is a plus P 100 grain, uh, 100 grain Powerball, 1150 feet per second out of a revolver barrel, and that's yielding 294 foot-pounds of energy out of a revolver barrel. So it's anyone's guess as to what kind of a mess we're about to make. Uh, I've got three sodas, I've got three Powerballs. All right, and just for fun, we'll load them through the... Uh, Rear loaded gate. Okay, those load up quite beautifully. Very nice. Uh, no snags or sharp edges on the uh, on the side loading gate. Very nice fit and finish. Okay, <laughs> I have no idea what these are going to do, but I know when I hit those sodas, it's going to make quite a mess here. So uh, let's uh, have some fun here. Hundred grain power balls versus our evil high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> and that was out of a rifle barrel, so those are definitely uh, laying some havoc. Man, what a gorgeous, gorgeous rifle. Not only in the uh, overall aesthetic and the beauty of it, but the function, smooth action. Um, I, I have to say, you know, initially when Chad and I did the video on the X-Series 357 Magnum, uh, we outfitted that particular gun uh, with a suppressor, and that is a heck of a lot of fun. But I, I don't know. I might be a little bit torn between uh, this one and the X-Series. I, I don't know if I can make up my mind which one I like more. Um, this one definitely scratches that just beauty aesthetic. 
And uh, if you just are looking for a classic lever action in 357 Magnum, um, I would certainly look at these. I mean, what a gorgeous, gorgeous rifle. And uh, really nice recoil pad on this one, although I'm not sure it even needs a recoil pad. There's so little recoil. Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure it would be, it would be fair to count it as recoil it. Not bad at all. Okay, so more 38s. We'll take a few longer shots just for fun. Down there at 80 yards, I stacked two of those 38s right on top of each other. I mean, that's for iron sights, that is a fantastic. Um, really nice setup. All right, a couple of more of, I want to group a few of the 357 Magnums here at close range, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with here on that. And we'll use the side loading gate. Since so many people were asking for it, I mean, we have to use it. All right, so really nice and smooth there. Okay, it is handy to have a side loading gate. And uh, you know, big kudos to Henry for listening to their customers and uh, caving uh, into the pressure in a good way. <laughs> All right, it's always cool to see when a, when a company gives their uh, customers what they want, and they definitely did that with this rifle. Beautiful. You still get the flexibility using the, uh, the front tube if you want, but with the added benefit of having the uh, rear loading side gate. All right, 357 Magnum, full bore gold dot. Uh, this is as far down the rabbit hole as this cartridge goes. Okay, or at least close. Wow, if you got, look down there and you see where those rounds hit at 80, they all stacked right there in the same area. I think that this gun definitely exhibits some really great inherent accuracy potential. And I think as a deer rifle or a little you know, short food plot gun or something, this would be a really nice option. I do plan on taking this particular rifle out and maybe trying to take a whitetail or something maybe this winter. So uh, I think I'm gonna do that for sure. And I really do wanna get some more data in the door in terms of the effectiveness of guns like this uh, for deer hunting purposes. Um, you guys might recall an Instagram post that I made earlier in the year, well, last year, uh, near the end of deer hunting season. I took a deer with a 7.62 by 39 bolt gun. And uh, I mean, she ran a little ways. It, it, I mean, it was a humane shot, of course, and a perfect shot in terms of putting it right where it needed to go. But I'd be curious to know in the same environment and in the same distance, how the 357 Magnum would do out of a rifle length barrel compared to 7.62 by 39 or maybe even 30-30 um, because you're getting into some very similar bullet weights as 30-30. Obviously 30-30 is probably going to have a little bit more you know oomph behind it than a 357 but I think with a good bullet okay and a long barrel uh, this thing could definitely be capable of doing great job on uh, on even medium-sized game dare I say. Guys, have a great day. We appreciate you watching. I uh, hope you all have a great day. And uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans. You know, head over to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a nice snazzy t-shirt. Those are all ways that you can support the channel if you uh, wish to support what we're doing directly. Uh, those are the most direct ways you can do so. Have a great day. Many more videos on the way. We hope you enjoyed this uh, beautiful rifle. I know we did. And uh, you'll see more out of this one. Have a good one. See you next time.